Number 33, calculate the mole fraction of each solute and solvent. And then we have letter A. So in this case, we have 0 0.710 kilograms of sodium carbonate, which is washing soda, Na2CO3. And then this is in 10.0 kilograms of water, which is a saturated solution at zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's get down to business. We want to find out the mole fraction of the solute and the solvent. Now, they gave us two compounds here, right? Sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, and water. And we know that water is H2O. Now, which one is the solute and which one is the solvent? Well, the solute is always the smaller amount which is getting dunked into the liquid medium. Now, by the wording here, they said that we have 0 0.710 kilograms of this sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, and we're going to put that in the water, right? 10 kilograms of water. So if I'm putting the Na2CO3 into the water, the Na2CO3 has to be the solute, and the water has to be the solvent. And together, when the solute and the solvent come together, they make one happy solution. So there's your three S's, solute, solvent, and solution. But now, if we want to find out the mole fraction, what is that formula? Well, the formula is this. And maybe I'll put it up here. Now, a mole fraction is represented by letter X, capital X. Capital X stands for mole fraction. And this is basically just stating a general fraction, but they're telling you specifically what units you can use. Any fraction is always a part over a whole, right? And if you wanted to turn a fraction into a percent, you have to times by 100. But any fraction is whatever part you're looking for divided by the total amount. Now, in this case, when you're looking for a mole fraction, you can only look for one compound at a time. So since this question asks for, we want to find the mole fraction of the solute and the solvent, I have to do this formula twice. But for each one of them, I take the moles of that compound that I'm looking for and divide by the total moles in the whole solution. But kilogram, kilogram, moles, 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 right? If we want moles, 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 and we only have kilogram, kilogram, that's not good. I need to first convert into moles. But the thing here is that they gave me kilogram values. Generally speaking, if we're trying to find moles, I could go from a gram value to a mole value. So the first thing is I'm going to just bring these kilograms out and go to grams. Now, anytime you want to go from kilograms to grams, you just multiply by 1,000. Similarly, take the decimal, move it three spots to the right, and that's basically the same thing. So you have 710 grams of the sodium carbonate, so maybe I'll list that out now. So we have 710 grams of Na2CO3, and let's do the same for the water. They gave us 10 kilograms, I want to convert to grams, so I'm going to times by 1,000, or similarly, take the decimal, move it over to the, to the right three spots. So I fill in two zeros, it seems, so 10,000 grams. I'm just going to take a step back and look at that. One, two, three, that looks good. Okay, so now I have 710 grams of Na2CO3 and 10,000 grams of H2O. Now, back to basics, right? Grams to mole conversion, coming back. You're never going to lose it. It's never going to go away. Grams to moles, I just labeled it as A, right? If you want to go from a gram of one thing to the same uh, substance, but just in moles, grams to moles, you divide by the molar mass. So for each one of these, I'm going to convert to their respective moles of Na2, CO3, and the moles of H2O. But in order to do that, grams to moles, I have to divide each number by their molar mass. So let's look up on the periodic table what the molar mass of Na2CO3 is. 
you have two sodiums. And each sodium is 22.99. I'm just going to be pretty specific just to make sure that my answer is as accurate as it can be. Uh, plus one carbon, which is 12.01. And then plus three oxygens. And oxygen is 16 right on the dot. So two times 22.99 plus 12.01 plus three times 16. And that looks good to me. I got 105.99. So I'll take my 710 grams of the Na2CO3 divided by that number, and voila, I have the moles. 6.699. That looks good. Right, 6.699. Okay. Let's do the same for the water. Uh, I have two hydrogens, and each hydrogen on my periodic table is 1.008, plus one um, oxygen is 16. So two times 1.008 plus 16, 18, whoop, 18.016, so I'll take my 10,000 grams, divided by that number, Love my Kalki. TI-84 for the win. 555 point, I guess, 06? That's good enough. Okay, so now we have the, the moles of each individual component, right? So I, I have my numerator. I know the, the moles of each compound. So let's see, if I start, if I start building my, my fraction, right? I have to find the mole fraction, the x value of the Na2CO3, and I have to do the same for the H2O. So each one of them is going to be something divided by something. And in this case, we have 6.699 moles of the Na2CO3, and then I have the 555 0.06 moles of the H2O. Those are the moles of the individual compounds. Compound goes with compound. But now the bottom is the total number of moles. Well, I know that I have, you know, you know, moles of each component, and those are the only two things that I got in my solution. So how am I going to find the total moles? Yeah, you got it. We got to add these two values up together. So let's do it. 6.699 plus... 555.06. Five, 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 Numbers look good. 561.759, and that's your total moles in the whole entire solution. So that is the denominator for each fraction. And now we are ready to go. I'm just going to rewrite. We have Na2. CO3, we got H2O, and I'm ready to calculate. Here we go, 6.699 divided by this total moles. I got 0, 0.0, uh, I guess three sig figs, 0 0.0119. And now I do the same for the, for the H2O, 555.06 divided by that guy, and I get 0 0.988. No units for mole fractions, because uh, it's just a fraction, right? Mole on the top divided by mole on the bottom, the unit mole cancels out, and we are done. Now, if you want to give yourself a check, right, just know that if you have all your components, all your individual fractions, if you add up all your mole fractions, what number should they equal? So if maybe I just take this number total and add it to this number total, let's see what number I get. Ah, there it is. You get exactly one. And that's how it should work. All your mole fractions total together should equal one. All right, so I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love helping you guys out. 
And I'm here with you every step of the way. I really hope that this channel is giving you the confidence and uh, the necessary learning tips and tricks for you guys to do well on your tests and quizzes. Um, thank you for using the channel. I'm here for you guys. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Have a great day. Keep studying hard and always keep learning. Okay, bye-bye.